Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. So the patient who attended with bilateral, fully occluding, soft, glutinous, very dark earwax, and we know it's been there for a while, and also very matted earwax. You see there's a lot of cilia, a lot of hairs here. Now, the hairs in the ear do serve a purpose, they serve several purposes actually. These hairs, the angle that they protrude out, in most people help facilitate the natural migration of wax. Um, so the skin that lines the ear canal as it dies and sheds, it moves sideways out of the ear. And these, these little hair cells, um, these cilia at the entrance actually help facilitate the migration of skin cells. Also, uh, these hairs in the ear <coughs> also help filtrate the air that enters the ear. So any dust, pollen, foreign particles, a bit like with our um, nasal um, entrance, we've got a few cilia there. Uh, they help filtrate the air um, and purify the air. So there's no foreign body, um, bodies or pollen dust entering the ear. And finally, the hair follicle, so the root of these hairs, hair strands um, in, into the ear canal, you have the sebaceous glands that are attached to the hair follicles and also the cerumenous glands. So the sebaceous glands secrete an oily, fatty secretion, the same uh, oil, the fatty oil <coughs> substance that we have on our scalp. And ceremonious glands are um, oily sweat glands and these um, are attached to the hair follicles and as they produce the, um, the sweat and the oil, they travel up the hair strands into the ear canal and that combined with dead skin forms earwax. Now earwax is actually healthy, it's good, it performs a protective, um, it, obviously if it's not in excessive amounts it's not of course, but this oil, the sweat and dead skin as it uh, amalgamates to form earwax, it provides a protective coating of the ear canal. Uh, prevents the ear canal from drying and cracking the skin. Uh, it's generally hydrophobic, so it helps water repel out to the ear. Uh, it's slightly acidic, so it inhibits certain bacterial growth. And um, so, and also the acidity, believe it or not, it also serves as an insect repellent. So earwax is actually a healthy substance, and these hair <coughs> strands are um, kind of pivotal in the um, secretion of earwax and also the protection of the ear. Now, if you've got excessive amounts, obviously it's going to be an issue because the, well, it can be an issue because the wax can mat against it. Now, in this case, I feel the patient's trim there is these, these hair cells are, these hair cells are a bit deeper in the end. They shouldn't be this deep. It's only the cartilaginous portion, the outer third, that bear the hair follicles. So when you've got hair deeper in the ear, like you have here, you kind of know that these either these hair strands have been trimmed somewhere around the ear or from their scalp and it's entered the ear. I'm sorry I didn't really talk much about the procedure, but you can see there, I was just removing wax, we can see a beautiful view of the eardrum there. Um, we can see the incus, we can also see the round window niche for all the audiologists watching this and um, through the eardrum. So we just used a bit of olive oil because that wax is quite glutinous and sticky, it doesn't always suction very well. Um, now, when you've got a matted, um, earwax like this that the oil can sometimes be counterproductive because the hairs get very oily and it can stop the suction um, probe doing its work but fortunately it didn't in this case so immediately in the patient's right ear I just put the olive oil drops in straight away and it's just binded this wax as glutinous wax when it's glutinous it doesn't suction very well it blocks the suction probe the olive oil tends to bind wax together a bit like an egg in a, a potato cake or fish cake recipe so it comes out in bigger lumps, so the occlusion is removed. You can just see all these hairs at the bottom of the ear canal and it's matted against the wax. I'm using a fine end gauge now and you'll see just how all these hairs peel. So these hairs are not actually attached, there's no hair follicles in the root of the ear canal here. These are literally loose hairs that have been stuck in the ear. Hence why we know um, so, uh, this hair has been trimmed. So I, just explain to the patient, if they are trimming hairs, place a bit of cotton wool at the entrance um, so the hairs don't fly in. And just using fine end, you can see just the matrix these matted hairs can form. It's almost like a spider's web and then the wax kind of collects and mats into the spider web, this matrix of dead skin and hair. So we're just peeling this forwards off the anterior canal wall. You can just see all these hairs are all... Um, it's, I used to have a, a German Shepherd many years ago, her name was Callie, and um, oh, I spilled some water accidentally on the back of her, and all this hair got matted, and it's similar to this, and again, a beautiful view of the eardrum. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well. Thank you for all the lovely messages. Someone alluded to the fact that everyone's a bit concerned about my cough. 
I can, uh, um, I get regularly tested, so it's not um, what anyone may think it is. I can assure you, so we get regularly tested. It's just I've just been working so hard, and uh, part of my job, you have to talk a lot. Of course, we have to listen a lot as well, being an audiologist. But I'm running loads of training courses, and today is kind of the first day in a long, long time that I've not actually worked okay i'm doing this video but i kind of do this more as a vacation i quite enjoy doing this as educational and i kind of learn from watching my videos back so i can improve my service so i probably coughed a couple of times but um it's just because i've had a bit of rest today uh, my vocal cords are just very tired um but no thank you for all that that concern and keep well and i'll speak to you all soon take care bye